Did you ever ask yourself why the motorcycles use so much petrol? I guess not, but you want to learn how to save some money from it, don't you? In this video, I'm gonna give you 8 proven tips how to get the maximum fuel efficiency from any motorcycle. Stay with me. Welcome back guys, as you know everybody tries to save money one way or another. I personally believe that the money spent for petrol to go around the world are probably the best investment you can make, but it doesn't mean that I'm happy to pay more than I should. As I told you guys, I love your comments and I will always respond to the most interesting questions. So Varun Kunar asks, please give petrol saving tips. Thank you very much Varun, this was such a lovely long and detailed question, isn't it? No, I'm joking, it doesn't matter how long is the question, the important is the topic, it is interesting and I'm happy to talk about it. I'll repeat the question from the beginning, did you ever ask yourself why the motorcycles use so much petrol? I mean that the motorcycles use about the same petrol as the average normal size car? Let's see, an average car like Volkswagen Polo, it's 1350 kg and use between 4.8 and 5 liters per 100 km. Fair enough, but one motorcycle, like my Yamaha for example, is about 200 kg and use 4.55 liters per 100 km. Why? Even with me on the top, I am 100 kg plus 200 of the bike is 300 kg, it is still 4 times lighter. Why the hell it used the same amount of petrol? Because of the aerodynamic shape. In this picture, you can see the average car in wind tunnel. You can see how the wind goes on the top of the car, very smooth and better the shape is, faster the car will go and less petrol it will use. On that picture you can see how the motorcycle performs in wind tunnel and that's me riding happy somewhere around India. And now thanks to my graphic design skills you can see how effectively I am stopping the wind. Great, isn't it? What a wind buffer I am! So guys, the motorcycles use so much petrol because the rider and the bike itself got this terrible aerodynamic shape. Pavlin, wait a second, we know that, we got it, but how the hell all of this is going to help us with the fuel efficiency? Well, this is a good question and this reminds me actually to give you the 8 tips I promised at the beginning of the video. Tip number 1, try to improve your aerodynamic shape. Now you can see, again thanks to my great graphic design skills, how good the aerodynamic became after you have white saddle bags or the hard cases. It is obvious that the bike will be like a sail creating this constant stopping power and of course raise the fuel consumption with at least half liter per 100 km. This is what I noticed with very light saddlebags. With the big and square hard cases it will be even worse. Install a windscreen if you don't have it. It will improve the efficiency and also help you with the fatigue. Number 2. Constant instead of top speed. This will help you much more than you can even imagine. There is no way to ride your motorcycle with 160 km per hour on the highways and expect to be fuel efficient. No way. Actually, we have a word in Bulgaria. I'm not sure that I can uh, translate it correctly, but it will be something like uh, a starving horse never run. Or you cannot expect from a starving horse to run. Hmm. Not exactly like this, but anyway, I hope you get the point. I will suggest to keep the average speed between 100 and 110 km per hour. This will give you very good performance on the long term. The best way to know what is the most efficient speed for your motorcycle is to keep the RPMs in the middle of the scale. For example, if the maximum is 8000, keep it in 4 4500 and you will be ok. Number 3. Quality petrol. Always try to get the best quality petrol you can find at the moment. I know that in some places like Asia or Africa, this is going to be very difficult, but you can bring some octane boosters with you and you can still have some kind of nice octane. Even if you pay a little bit more for better quality petrol or for these octane boosters, at the end you will save some money. Number 4. Proper maintenance. New air filter, new spark, new ignition coil will improve the work of the engine, which of course will reduce the fuel consumption. Number 5. Turn off the engine. Every time when you need to wait more than a minute in a red light, traffic jam, construction works or something on the road, turn off the engine. The reason I said more than a minute because I don't want you to off the engine all the time. Because every time when you start the engine, what you actually do, you shorten it the life of your battery, your electric system, your starter, your oil and even your engine. On long term, this is not going to help you. Yes. 
you can save some money now at the moment from petrol, but then you will spend it for something else. That's why I don't like these modern stop and go systems, which one they install on almost every new car. Number six, tire pressure. Every time before you go, check the tire pressure. Flat or not properly inflated tires will consume more petrol than you can even imagine. Always use the tires which are recommended for your model. About that, check your manual. And just to let you know that the Knobby tires always use more petrol. Number seven, use the correct gear. Almost every rider or motorcycle instructor will advise you to go to the sixth gear or the top gear you've got as fast as possible with the idea to save petrol. I cannot really agree with that statement. It really depends from the riding situation at the moment and you have to use the proper gear the moment requires. For example, if you're going uphill and you're on the sixth gear, but actually you have to be on the fourth or fifth because your engine is not powerful enough, it's not gonna give you any benefits. It will be the other way around. You will use more petrol. Another example is that if you're going downhill, for example, on the sixth gear without throttle, you actually use less petrol than if you leave your motorcycle to either link on the neutral gear. This is just a few examples, but the, the conclusion is always use the gear you have to use at the moment. It really depends from your motorcycle and you're the person who need to learn that. Number eight, start in the cold mornings. Every time when you've got this chance, of course, start in the cold mornings. When the temperatures are five or 10 degrees lower, your engine will work much better than in the hottest part of the day. When the temperatures are cold, the air actually shrinks and your engine will receive more air for the same amount of time. This, of course, will increase the power and will lead you to the desired petrol efficiency. This is exactly what the intercoolers and the vehicles do. They actually cool down the air before it gets to the engine. All right, guys, these are the tips I promised to give you at the beginning. Now I'm gonna tell you something about the difference between the systems. Why one is better than another? Keep watching. Number one, injection is always better. I know that many love their carburetors and they will stand now and say, no, you don't know better is to have a carburetor. You can fix it everywhere. It's work better. But they have to confess that injection system is far more economical. It is designed, it is created to provide the best performance and the best fuel efficiency of the motorcycle, of the engine at every given time. And it doesn't matter how cold or how hot it is uh, or what kind of uh, mechanical skills the rider has because he needs to ride not to fix it. Yes, I will agree that if you have these skills, if you know how to adjust your carburetors, you can get maybe even better performance. But how many of you know how to deal with carburetors? The percentage is very, very low. Number two, forget about air-cooled engines. Yes, correct, forget about it. They are more and more difficult to find and in the next couple of years they will disappear completely. The reason for that is because they are very old and not efficient technology. To provide the best results from any engine, you need a constant temperature, 90 or 95 degrees. That's why on the water-cooled engines, we've got thermostat to keep this level all the time. With the air-cooled engines, the case is not the same. When you go on the highways, the engine actually cools down sometimes more than you need. When you stop in the traffic, it gets hot sometimes more than you expect. And all of this going to the different variations of the petrol use and they cannot really guarantee how much exactly the petrol will use or how efficient the petrol will be at all. As you know, many of you ride bikes and you know when the, the engine gets so hot, it actually cannot run well. You're twisting the throttle, it's make like, oh, you need to cool down the engine to work properly. That's why, guys, I believe that the best choice is always water-cooled modern engine. So, guys, next time when you want to change your motorcycle, keep this in mind. As usual, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time. Ciao.